Jesus. Let's pay homage to the Venus Gurus. Homage to the Venerable Mang Liao Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zheng Kong. Homage to His Holiness the Sixteen Kamata. to the three jewels of the altar and homage to the main deity of Homa today. Amitabha Dadakata of Sukawati. And his close attendants, Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva and Mahasthama Prabhda Bodhisattva. Dancan Katsu to Tan City. All Dhamma masters, Dhamma educators, Dhamma teachers, Dhamma instructors, Dhamma tutors, directors of temples and chapters and centers, and all disciples present here and over the internet. Good afternoon, everyone. How do you do? These are greetings in different languages. I still selling it. Ora Miko Kekero Mucho Skoi Ichiba Kimoji Jumi Yapi. Pilin pilin. Konnichiwa. Ah, uh, I would like to announce for next Sunday, May twenty eighth. May is almost gone at 3 p.m. There would be Manohara Homa Fire Offering Ceremony, Manohara, the wealth attracting goddess. And we all know that Manohara was emanated from Amitabha Buddha's heart. And her Vajra hook is very famous. In Tibetan Buddhism, she was called Manohara Vasudhara. In Sukhawati, she is the greatest wealth deity. If you don't like money, or if you don't want any money, you don't have to be the primary supplicant. Last night, we practiced Amitabha Buddha deity practice, the mantra Om Amitavase. When we chant Amitabha Buddha, Namo, 36 trillions, 119,500 Buddhas with the same name and identification of Amitabha. Om Amitabha. So, 
uh, do they tend this way in other schools? I did not invent this. When I read a sutra, there was an old lady who made the vow and in a huge barrel of rice, she vowed that she wanted to chant uh, Amitabha Buddha's name. And every time she chanted a name, she chanted the name, she would uh, take one rice and finish the whole grains of rice in that barrel. So she chanted and chanted every day. Just imagine how much rice in a barrel. And she had not finished, she only did a little bit. And then one day, she felt that the fire of life is about to be extinguished. And then looking at the rice inside the barrel, there was still a lot. She, it's impossible to finish, so she cried. Then a bodhisattva appeared and told her, why don't you chant Namo 36 trillions, 119,500 Buddhas with the same name and identification of Amitabha. After you chant this, you can just pour all the rice in the barrel and completed it. When I read that passage inside the book, I was very pleased. So I started to chant it that way. And I taught everybody to chant this way. By chanting this, Namo, 36 trillions, imagine. Buddha's name, with one statement, you complete it. Namo, 36 trillions, 119,500 Buddhas with the same name and identification of Amitabha. I don't know if other Buddhist schools uh, followed me to chant this way, but I discovered this inside the book. And, and I used it. I used all the good stuff that I found. And sure enough, Chanting this generates great power. But there's a disciple who asked me, can we chant Namo 36 trillion, 119,500, the same name and identification, Padma Kumara? <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> I've never read about this. So, Bodhisattvas are compassionate towards the sentient beings, so I taught uh, that Bodhisattva thought this, but they didn't teach about Padma Kumara or for your yidam. Now, what 36, 9,500 Manjusri Bodhisattva, that would be too much. That's going overboard. But knowing this, you know, we feel rest assured that we don't. Uh, we definitely give more than needed. There are many uh, names uh, of Amitabha Buddha. 
the Buddha of infinite life, Buddha of infinite light, uh, the king of Amrita Tathagata, and the boundless uh, light Buddha, unhindered Buddha, uh, uh, pure light Buddha, or uh, uh, wisdom light Buddha, ceaseless light Buddha, uh, the Buddha of inconceivable light, the Buddha of indescribable light, the Buddha transcending sunlight and moonlight, Buddha of pure light, Buddha of joyful light. They're all Amitabha Buddha's name. And um, Manjushri is the embodiment of Amitabha wills of true Dharma, and Yamantaka is Amitabha's will of injunction. So Amitabha Buddha generated 48 vows to widely deliver sentient beings. That's why when the ordained people greet each other, they say Namo Amitabha. Every Buddhist knows about this uh, holy name. Someone asked about uh, Nora Rinpoche, who was Master, uh, the Venerable Mang Liao Ming's Guru. And the greatest Dharma in Tantric Buddhism, the Norna, Master Norna said, is the Amitabha's great Dharma, is the greatest Dharma in Tantric Buddhism. So today, by performing Amitabha Buddha's Homa, we did uh, the greatest Dharma of Tantric Buddhism. Who is uh, the Venerable Mang Liao Ming? Many people cannot find information about him. He told me before, His father was the peace empire, Yang Xiuqin, Yang Xiuqin. Yang Xiuqin. Qi Zhong, Taiwan, you, you, Qi Ge Wang. There were several kings. Qi Zhong, you, you, Wang. And one of them. That was very disciplined or strict, called Sdakai. If you know him, please raise your hand. Yiwang Sdakai. And Sdakai's son is the Venerable Mang Liao Ming. But why did his family name is Zhang? Because at that time, Sdakai has died. And Sdakai uh, gave birth to a child who followed uh, the family name of his mother. Uh, this was the past of my guru, and we did not uh, did not seek further information about it. Now we are going to the 
Now, the main subject. Question from Malaysia by Lian Hua Ganming. Homage to the precious lineage root guru, Living Buddha Lian Sheng. Peace, ease, health, and longevity. Guru Buddha, I would like to ask. <coughs> When we recite the Siddhikabha Sutra, should we visualize ourselves in the Tushita Heavens gathering of Siddhikabha Bodhisattva? Uh, are we allowed or do we need to visualize the jade green, pure, profound, pure land of the southern world? When reciting the name or mantra of Siddhikarpa, and could you please explain the various auspicious scenes of Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva's pure land, the Chui Wei or Jade Green Profound Pure Land in the south, the southern pure land? The second question, it was only after my parents passed away that I started reciting the Siddhikabha Sutra and Mantra every day. I wish that my parents can receive the seven parts of the merit, and I visualize them reciting together with me. So, Grandmaster, can they receive all the seven parts or 70% of the merit so that they can swiftly attain rebirth in the Maha Twin Lotus Pond? Second, that was the second question. The third question now. Once in the Tushita heaven, Sakyamuni Buddha spoke on Siddhikarva Sutra. And all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions, along with Dharma protectors and all go gods and ghosts, come to support and praise Siddhikarva Bodhisattva. So, Grandmaster, why does Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva not appear in other Dharma gatherings? Or was it that Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva appear as different beings, like because Grandmaster Lu is Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva? What? Here, homage and gratitude to Guru Buddha on Guru Second point, as long as you, like when you chant a sutra, and the chanter, you receive seven parts, and the person whom you dedicate merit to is three parts, but you want to give your seven parts to your parents, and now you're asking if they can receive that. In my opinion, you want to give your seven parts to your parents, and your parents had the three parts, and because you chant the Siddhikarpa Sutra, receive seven parts. And then, if you have done the merit dedication of your seven parts to your parents, so that means your parents got all of them, 100% then. Don't need to ask if they got it or not. As long as you generate the intent, that's good enough. You don't need to worry or ask. As long as you have done the merit dedication and you are willing to give your part to your parents, as long as you have the heart and the intent, then your parents will get it. 
may reply to your second question. And the first question is about the Cui Wei or Jit Green Pure Land, Profound Pure Land or the Sudden Emerald Pure Land. All Pure Lands are marvelous. In the future, if there's the right affinity, I will talk about it. If I talk about it now, just one realm would be in the future. In the future, I will maybe I will talk about Siddhikabha's purely because it's not in a few words, or maybe I'll write it in my books. That would be fine too. Third question. Siddhikabha Bodhisattva is one of the eight great Bodhisattvas. Like when we chant the Avalokiteshvara Hiking Sutra, we would chant the eight great Bodhisattvas. Avalokiteshvara, Manjushri, Samantabhadra, Siddhikarpa, Maitreya Bodhisattva, Akasakarpa Bodhisattva, Vajapani Bodhisattva, Viskambi Bodhisattva. Those are the eight great Bodhisattvas. And Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva is one of the eight great Bodhisattvas. Sakyamuni Buddha highly respected Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva. The Buddha entrusted uh, sentient beings in Jambudipa in the world to Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva. I will look at this one, it's truly great, but uh, he was not entrusted, and many people ask. And if about compassion, that's, I will look at this one. Uh, joy and equanimity, that would be Mahasthama Bodhisattva. And with wisdom, you are Manjushri Bodhisattva. Many great Bodhisattvas, Samantabhadra too, also Dharma Prince. Our look at this Vara is also Dharma Prince. Mahasthama Prapta is Dharma Prince. Like from the Huayan, Avatamsaka world, there would be Sakyamuni Buddha, Manjushri, and Samantabhadra as the Dharma princes. In the Sukhavati, Avalokiteshvara and Mahasthama Prapta Bodhisattvas are the Dharma princes. And Vairokana's realm, Lukana Buddha, Buddha Lukana, and Sakyamuni Buddha are the Dharma princes. Many Dharma princes. So in the Siddhikabha Sutra, why did Sakyamuni Buddha entrust the sentient beings in the world to Siddhikabha Bodhisattva? I remembered, I read a book. Uh, maybe not reading a book or listening to a teaching. I remember a Dharma teacher said, Sakyamuni Buddha was a monk. Sakyamuni Buddha was the greatest monk. And of the eight great bodhisattvas, there was only one who appeared as a monk, as a sravaka, and that was Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva. Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva appeared mostly as a lady, and Manjushri too as a lady. Samantabhadra also appeared as a lady. 
Maitreya also appeared as a lady. Akasagarbha also appeared as a lady. Viscambin too appeared as a lady, and Vajapani also appeared as a lady, lady or lay people, lay practitioner. Only Siddhikarva Bodhisattva appeared as a Sravaka, or a monk, an ordained person. Some people say that. That's why Sakyamuni Buddha entrusted the devas and humans to Siddhikarva Bodhisattva before he entered Parinirvana. It's written here. Siddhartha Bodhisattva did not appear in other Dharma gatherings? No, they, he does. He did. Didn't you read it in the sutras? Did he appear in any of Sakyamuni Buddha's Dharma gatherings? Anybody knows? Huh? <laughs> well, in uh, Siddhikarpa Sutra, well, of course, the Siddhikarpa. But how about other sutras? Okay, let's not talk more about it. Yes. He supports, supported. Do you know how many emanations Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva has? Countless. Uh, in the Siddhikarpa Sutra, there was a chapter on the uh, emanations of Siddhikarpa, that all the different emanations of Siddhikarpa went to, to Shita heaven. And there were innumerable of them chant praise the Tathagata with their gaze fixed on the Tathagata and then they combine into one body. So he had countless emanations. So Siddhikabha Bodhisattva of course went and supported all of the Buddha's gatherings Sakyamuni Buddha gave so many Dharma teachings. Of course, Siddhikapa Bodhisattva had, had gone and supported those, definitely, for sure. Was he mentioned in the Vimalakirti Sutra? There were many great Bodhisattvas. Oh, there was Manjushri and Avalokiteshvara, as we remember. But was there Siddhikarpa? Of all those Bodhisattvas, several in the tens of thousands. So, Do you remember? Was Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva mentioned? No, it was not mentioned. Mm. It doesn't matter whether he was, whether he appeared or not, but he had many emanations. And it's written here that Gamasa Lu is also Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva, Amitabha. 
I've never heard that people said I am Siddhikaba Bodhisattva. Am I? Did I ever say that? Oh, my brother. <laughs> oh, you said it's my brother. Yeah, I did say he's my brother. And Siddhikaba Bodhisattva too is a Padma Kumara, a lotus youth. My brother, but I did not say that I am Siddhikaba Bodhisattva. You said because Grand Master Lu is Siddhikaba Bodhisattva. But let me add the question mark there, which means you did not know, and I also did not know. But Siddhikarpa will definitely support. And about the marvelous scenes in the Jade Green Profound Pure Land, I will talk about it later. Uh, let me share a joke. Before marriage, someone introduced a girl to me. And what is what are my requirements? A gentle and upright and uh, speak well and can be brought outside and and introduce to me uh, like a funeral someone in the funeral home yeah, it's a little bit of play of words of Chinese The wife said to the husband, Honey, my tummy is getting bigger and bigger. Am I pregnant? And the husband replied without even looking, I know who's the dad. And the wife said, Who? And the husband said, There were, there were three. McDonald, Kentucky, and Hu Xi Zhang. So the tummy was because of food. This is a Oh, it's a long joke. Uh, the question is, who is your children? You sign in their birth certificate, and they sign in your death certificate. When they come, you laugh so hard, you smile so hard, but when you die, they cry so hard. Well, not necessarily. Uh, you need to nod your head before the doctor can do the cesarean, but they need to nod their head before the doctors can uh, take away the life supports. And you send them to the kindergarten and they send you to the senior home. You give them a bicycle and they give you a wheelchair. 
And many years ago, you carried them back home from the hospital, and many years later, they carry your urn home. Huh? Uh, you take their photo and they carry your photo. And they, when they want money, you wire that to them, but when you want money, they burn some money for you. And you register them for the census, and then the children eliminate you from the, the family registration. Those are called your children. Does it make sense? It's about time. Is this a joke too? A female co-worker's husband brought her lunch, did not say anything, just placed it there. And a new colleague asked, who's that? And the colleague said, oh, uh, delivery. So, and then, the new male co-worker asked, didn't you pay him? Oh, no need. I just accompany him at bed tonight. So, so this new male co-worker brought her four dishes and a soup the next day, and everybody laughed. This is only for Taiwanese. Which is like a neighborhood. Had told the little kid, oh, it's so late, why are you outside alone? And the kid said, oh, mom and dad are fighting. Wow, who, that's, who's your dad? I don't know. That's why they're fighting about it. That's what they're fighting about. Now we will talk about Vimalakirti Sutra. In the Brahman heaven, he was honored among the Brahma Devas for teaching the Supreme Wisdom. If Vimalakirti was among the Brahma Devas, he was also the most honored among them. Why? Because Vimalakirti is a perfectly enlightened Buddha, or perfectly awakened or realized Buddha. So, to the Brahma Devas, what did he teach? He taught the most supreme wisdom. In spiritual cultivation, sometimes we go beyond the realm of desire to reach the realm of form, which is the place of Mahabrahmas. And there are many Mahabrahmas, Mahabrahma Devas, or gods. In Hinduism, we refer to him as Brahma. And in Hinduism, he was the creator of heaven and earth. 
The water in Ganges River was spit out from Brahmadeva's mouth. And because Vimalakirti was in India, but if Vimalakirti was in the Brahma heaven, he was also the greatest among the Brahma devas and would teach them the most supreme wisdom, the most superior supreme wisdom, because the Brahma devas still need to be reincarnated. All the three heavenly realms still have to go through transmigration. So the supreme wisdom is to let, to lead the Brahma devas, because when they're about to be reincarnated, they have the supreme wisdom, so they know how to cultivate spiritually to go to a higher realm. And among the Lord Indras, he was honored for showing impermanence. And the Indra is in the desire realm, the realm of desire. So Indra is also a heavenly king. So when Vimalakirti was in the Indra heaven, he would teach the Indras that the precious throne of the Lord Indra would uh, decay, even flowers will wilt, and even now you have fragrance on your body, but you will start to sweat, and your celestial garments were originally always clean, but then it became dirty, it would become dirty. So, the Lord Indra's precious throne is not forever. And you would be sick of sitting on the Dharma throne at all times. Although in the Indra heaven, the flowers never wilt, but when the heavenly being is about to, uh, to be reincarnated, then the flowers will wilt, and the body would start to sweat, because although the bodies of the heavenly beings are radiant, fragrant, but then they would start to sweat, and would lose the luminosity. But in Chinese, we call the woman's sweat to be fragrant sweat. And the man's sweat is foul. And the celestial garments would get dirty. So Vimalakirti will tell the beings in the Indra heaven that this Indra heaven is also impermanent, that it is not forever. So therefore, you need to practice Buddha Dharma because the Brahma, the beings in the Brahma heaven and the Indra heaven are supportive of Buddha Dharma. So they also need to know to cultivate spiritually, not just taking refuge in the Three Jewels. All they do in the Brahma heaven and Indra heaven is to take refuge in the Three Jewels, but they need to cultivate spiritually. Among the protectors, he was revered to protect sentient beings. Vimalakirti was in the heaven of the four heavenly kings, 
and the four heavenly kings protect the sentient beings and the three jewels of Buddha Dharma. Hmm. And you go to China, uh, at all temples in China, the first hall as you enter is always the hall of the four heavenly kings. And then there would be Maitreya Bodhisattva seated there, and behind him there would be Sangarama, and Sangarama, Sangarama would be facing the great hall. So the entrance hall is the four heavenly kings. So that's why we call the uh, world protector the four heavenly kings. Uh, Viru, Dhaka, uh, Dasarastra, Viru, Paksa, Vaishravana, the four heavenly kings. In the lunar calendar, the farmer's armalak, it would be written the day where the four heavenly kings are patrolling the world. So it means that these four kings from the heavens patrol around the Saha world and protect the humans. And when Vimalakirti was in this heavens of the four heavenly kings, also protect and support and help all sentient beings. The elder Vimalakirti, utilizing countless skillful means, benefited sentient beings. He manifested an illness in his body as a skillful means. Mm, this connect with the, next, the following one. So the elder Vimalakirti utilized countless skillful means to benefit sentient beings like the heavenly realm of desire, form, and formlessness are the highest, the highest realms of the six rebirth realms, and that's the heavenly realm which is in, divided into three, the de realm of desire, with, and then the realm of form with light, and the realm of formlessness, which is close to Buddha nature, but also the realm of nihilism, which is called the heavens of four emptiness. And there's the five non-returning heavens, which is close to nihilism. It's called the five non-returning heavens. So the elder Vimalakirti utilize countless skillful means to benefit sentient beings. And heavenly beings are part of the sentient beings, one of the six rebirth realms. So if you rise to the heavenly realm of desire, form, or formlessness, it's still considered in, as part of the reincarnation. So he benefited all sentient beings. He's, he manifested an illness in his body as a skillful means. Due to his illness, the kings, ministers, elders, lay people, and Brahmins, as well as numerous princes and other officials, numbering in the thousands, all went to inquire about his illness. His illness. He was very famous in that city. Even the kings and the princes and the ministers and all the famous people went to 
a visit because he was sick. So when he appeared ill as a skillful means, the king, ministers, elders, lay people, Brahmins, uh, princes, officials, numbering in the thousands, all went to inquire about his illness, visiting Vimalakirti. When they went, Vimalakirti utilized his situation of being ill to extensively expound the Dharma. Then he must not have been very sick, must be a very small ailment. Because if he was gravely ill, he could not speak on any dharma. So maybe just catching cold, just sneezing, and everybody visited him already. Then he utilized such an opportunity of being sick to give dharma teaching to all these people. Actually, according to the many explanations by other people, that his sickness was not real, was fake. So, fake illness. We often say, oh, sick. A human being is really sick can get really sick. With the fake illness, you eat the fake medicine. But a true illness, there is no medicine that can cure it. How could Vimalakirti get sick? He shouldn't have been sick, but he had the physical body. When you have a physical body, then you will get sick. I don't dare to say that I have no illnesses. I can have illnesses too. Why? It will talk about it here later. It will talk about the body. The body is really bad. It is an aggregate of the four elements, the earth, water, fire, and wind. So an aggregate of false or elements, and then you add Buddha nature to it. Then you add the consciousness, we say, add the consciousness, then it would become a human. When the four elements are not balanced or harmonized, then you are sick. If the wind, too much wind, too much fire, too much water, or too much earth, then you will feel sick. So when these four elements are balanced completely right, then you would be healthy. But with a slight off balance, then you would be sick. That's what sickness is about. But Vimalakirti had transcendent power and self-mastery. He was Jinli Tathagata appearing as a human being in the Saha world to deliver sentient beings. He was delivering sentient beings in the Saha world. He was helping Sakyamuni Buddha. He was very famous in that city. That's why the kings and the ministers and all of them went to uh, visit him. 
thousands of them every day, and then he started uh, telling Buddha Dharma to them. That's what uh, it meant. But some people said that he faked his illness and used the opportunity to teach Buddha Dharma to the people. It doesn't matter whether he was really sick or it was a fake illness, but the point is he was giving Dharma teaching when he was sick. And then someone asked him, why did you get sick? And he replied, because sentient beings are sick, that's why I'm sick. Uh, Grand Master Lu can also reply that way. Grand Master, how come you have ailments? Uh, because sentient beings have ailments, that's why I'm sick. But the body is no good. Lao Tzu said it very clearly. My biggest peril or trouble in this world is because I have this physical body. Lao Tzu of Taoism stated that the worst, the biggest misery or troubles of my life is the physical body. But why a physical body is a peril? And we Malakirti will talk about it. Everybody went to visit him because he utilizes the situation of being ill to expound Dharma. You know, he did it intentionally. I am sick, come, visit me, I am about to die. So the king, princes, ministers, everybody come. And then he used the opportunity to expound the Dharma. King, ministers, elders, lay people, Brahmins, and numerous princes and officials, numbering in the thousands, all went to inquire about his illness. Sakyamuni Buddha had said that visiting the sick is the generated the greatest blessing. So if you visit the sick, generate the great blessing. But no, during COVID-19, if you visit them, you would be kicked out from the hospital or not allowed. If you die during that time, your family and friends I could not even get near you, and you were all by yourself and cremated and gone. We could not do anything during that period of time, right? They, we all had to be isolated. I saw something very moving. The girlfriend was infected with COVID-19 and about to die. And with the plastic, uh, the transparent plastic uh, uh, divider or uh, isolator. And then the boyfriend went to visit her. And then he opened uh, the, uh, what you call it, the, the plastic. And then they died, both died. What that kind of laugh was very moving. <laughs> oh heavens, very moving. That's because they haven't got married. That's why you dared to do that and you had the love. But after marriage, <laughs> Oh, it's just about to die. It's fine. <laughs> Maybe just uh, two drops, two drops of tears, good enough. That's after marriage. Ah, it's hard. Yeah, uh, some people still have love after marriage, but it's hard to say. Love, like the book I wrote, this is called Samsaric Affection, or in Chinese it's 
uh, love, karmic connection from many love, many lifetimes. Uh, some are very touching. You can drop tears reading. People have feelings. You know, it's very interesting. Every time I think of my mom, I would drop tears. But why, when I think of my dad, I never shed any tears? Actually, my dad also raised me. If did, he did not earn any money from the power company, how could I have grown up? until 19, and then I went to the military school. So, of course, I owed, I owed him some gratitude, too. He raised me until I was 19, before I became independent and went to the military school. But thinking of him, when I got a notice from the military college, I was so moved that I could be free. I was about to go to the military school. When I got accepted at the military school, my dad hid it did not let me know about it. And my mom kept, kept telling him, because he got accepted, so you should let him go. And the military school was free, so we didn't have to spend any money. So let him go to the military school. I was working already by then. I was already working by then in the Southern Power Company in Kaohsiung. Uh, the power, the Southern Power Company in Kaohsiung. So I was working already after high school graduation. So finally, my dad told me, you got accepted in the military school. And I said, yes, I definitely have to go. And they said, no. And, and then I told them, if that's the case, I would become a gangs gangster. A gangster. And then I did, I bought a pack of cigarettes and started to smoke and just roaming around on the streets and did not go to work anymore. And I claimed that I'm gangster now. And then the neighbors told my parents, yeah, do you know your son, Katsu, who's smoking on the road and he wants to be a gangster? And then my parents got worried and let, let him, let me go. So luckily, and then I left home. And then remembering what she told me then. But every time I remembered my dad, I would not cry. I'm saying that a uh, human being has emotions, has feelings. That's all, Kumani Benihu.